This is my celebrity meeting, hello. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Last time we asked, will these antique and vintage dealers fall into perdition? Find out tonight on the thrilling conclusion of... Welcome viewers, we're at the old state capital in Illinois where a strange turn of events has taken us in a completely different direction. It's George the Antique Nomad. It is Sunday. I usually would have stayed at the antique show and sold through today, but there was going to be rain. So I went ahead and packed up. It was a great show, the best I've done in the Midwest so far at a show. It was really amazing. And that means I need merchandise. This building behind me is where Abraham Lincoln started out working in the Illinois legislature because this little town, Vandalia, was the capital until 1839. I'm going to a sale down the road from here because a friend of mine is holding it today, so I've got to get on the road and get down the road. So I'm at the place and I'm about to go in. The sale started yesterday, but we'll see if there's anything left. I see some swung glass inside, that's good. I wonder if I can get in here unnoticed. So I hear everything's half off. <laughs> Here's somebody that I've never met before. Hello, Stella, you are famous. I know who you are, yes I do. Oh, you are a little nugget, aren't you? <laughs> Aww. This is my celebrity meeting. Hello. I'm getting that lady's table over there. She was going I've never seen the Chippendale style sewing oh, table. Oh, that's a sewing table? Yeah, really? And it opens up with the little spools? Oh, how cool. Oh, this is great. So this is something that Laura is getting. And I can see why because... So is it this one that opens? Is it a... Yeah, you have to like... I know there's a trick to these. There we go. Yeah, you push one side and then it rolls open and there's your sewing stuff. It's great, actually. Let's put this in so it doesn't get lost. That is really cool. Cool. So Laura got good stuff and she got stuff for her mom, which is over on the counter. And Jamie got good stuff. Um, Jamie beat everybody to the most awesome paint by number. I don't blame you. There's a pair. Oh, cool. Wow. Look at that. Those are beautiful. Those are really good. I would have those in my house. That's yeah. awesome. And then let's see. This is going with Laura. Round the world we sail. And then Laura's mom is getting the blue and white plates, which what a great deal that is. Gosh, that's only like $1.50 a piece. That's a nice old pattern. So how cool. So this is where I am. This is the friend who's having the sale. <laughs> And my new friend, Stella. <laughs> and there's Aaron. Hi, Aaron. I don't know that we've ever met officially. I've seen you so many times, I feel like we have, but hello. <laughs> and there's Barb, of course. <laughs> and there's Jamie. And here's everybody. With your shirts on? Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that's great. And Nikki's got fat birds. <laughs> And she's got a wonderful butterfly pin on her mask. I love that. Yes. It glows? Really? Wow, cool. I'm going to get up just a little closer so people can see that. That is so cool. And look who just came in the door. Yay! <laughs> They're super balls. Oh, how cool. Boing. <laughs> I'm surprised, actually. Yeah, I had one. I dropped it on the floor, and it split in half, and that was the end of that. One time. Okay, so I'm going to tour around because this is the first time I've actually been in here. And he's got really cool stuff. And, you know, I sold a lot at the show, so I really do need to shop. So basically, he's done this as a pop-up store, but, you know, he could open anytime he wants now. And he's really redone this place. It's really great. He's got 68 on the Flamingo Mirror. I have to say, if I was going to Florida, I might just take that with me. And look at all the chalkware. It's too bad that uh, Michelle isn't here from comfy, cozy vintage because she loves this kind of stuff. He has really elevated his game as a dealer over the past couple of years. Nice silhouettes here. 
and he's got big little books. He's really got a lot of interesting merchandise in here. I mean, it's like a store that is general line and you could find modernist and you could find vintage and you could find traditional. Look at this fun painting. That's very mid-century. And then up here, we've got biscuits, old tins, the tropical box tin. That's really cool. I think he got that from me, actually. So I better not buy it back. <laughs> that happens sometimes. I've sold people things and then I turned around and bought them back. Oh, here's a cute little Seminole doll. Let's see what he wants for that. $10. Well, that's my first purchase. Yay. Love her. Found a woman. I found a woman. Yes, I know. Everyone's been telling me I should. Cool lithography, of course, the owl family. Got to have owls. Lots and lots of owls. Concrete poodle, I love that. It's just crusty and chippy enough. And of course, he's got lots of swung glass and modern glass from the 60s and 70s. The Viking bird's got its label, that's nice. And it's the ruby red, so it's a little harder to find. And there's the plateau mirror that he got when we were shopping in Princeton. What a great mirror. That was such a good deal. Oh, and he must have gotten this for Misty. How nice. Barb is going to show us her corner in here. We're going into the next room here. You've seen this as seen on TV. And wow, look at all this. Oh, cool. This is great. We got the shelf at an auction. I love the shelf. It's so great. It's 50 store display with the green. And then it's got pegboard. That's super functional. And no, you need it for your display. Oh, look. Barb got something for Misty, too. And she priced it at $20. So that's actually a great price for that jar. That jar used to go for about $85, and she's only got $20 on it. So that's kind of tempting. I hate to say it. Sorry, Misty. And the ship's glasses. These are really cool. The screen print. They just are finding so much fun stuff, and the colors are good. And it's just so fun to see it all laid out here. There's her banner, Winking Owl Antiques, based on the Shawnee cookie jar. And then if you look around, I mean, there's just so much stuff. I can't wait to actually go shopping. And we'll look at some stuff up close as we do. And then look at this other great shelf. Health Spot is what it says up here. Oh, I would love to have that fixture. That is really cool. This is right out of the 50s. It's got that happy mint green. Lots of shelving. Oh, yeah. Now, there's neat stuff in here. I love the triptych mirror with the silhouettes. This is 1920s. They have it priced at 145 and for the fact that it has two silhouettes, yeah, pretty good deal. Gala Midway Spring Carnival. Mary Beth from Fat Bird Finds Love Circus Stuff. I'm sure she checked those out. Oh, come on. Is she going to do it? Come on. Get up there, Stella. She's like, I've only got one. There's his cameras on me. That was more of a human trick than a dog trick. Aladdin teapot by Hall, $38 in the cobalt blue. And then look at this funky owl. Isn't that fun? This is newer, but I don't know anything about it. Lots of salt and pepper shakers. These guys are especially cute. He doesn't look like he's having a very good day, though. Down here is a neat red wing vase. And it's only $16. I think that's a pretty good buy. It's got a little factory flaw on the inside. It's not a chip. It's under the glaze, but that might bother someone. Otherwise, I would buy this for that price. So a bunch of folks are here shopping and having fun. Oh, that's really cool. I like the old life game. The original dog was a hand model. <laughs> wow. That's very good. It's when they stroke the preparation H that I'm just like, really, is that necessary? <laughs> okay, I think I saw him buy this. So do I buy it from him? Maybe. And I like this Tiger and Baboo by Cohen. I mean, it's just a litho print, but it's really cool. And it's a low number. Lots of moon and stars. And yes, the little blue jar. Okay, let's see what's in here. Halloween. Very cute. 
I wonder if there's any treasure craft in here. I know he had some when he initially was filming this, so I'm gonna see. Oh, look at this fat cat. I have a feeling my mother would think that was cute. Nice check vases down here in the spatter glass. So the two in the back are check, and the one up front is Murano. Spatter glass is basically where you just mix a bunch of colors together. Sometimes they call it end of day because they just use whatever is left in the kiln. And sometimes they did it deliberately. These are fun. These always look like little pieces of candy in these Murano glass pieces to me. Latticino Bell. Latticino, the English decided that they would call this Italian glass Latticino because it sounded Italian to them. And look, it's lattice work. Latticino basically means coffee with cream in Italy. So they think it's very funny that we call it that. $28 is the fair price for that. Cigarette lighters, I like these. Unavailable, well, that actually sounds kind of fancy and shishi. I'm unavailable. I might like to have that sign. I like little funny signs like that that can be taken out of context. They sell well at shows. This is pretty with the Art Deco on it. This hand-painted pattern reminds me of some of the geometry of Clarice Cliff, but I'm sure it's probably a German knockoff from the 1920s or 30s, and it is. And then this sure has a nice pattern. It's very folksy looking, and it says Hangemalt, which is German for handmade. So this is a German piece, $19, very pretty. A bunch of the wonderful Riviera pattern. This was made by Homer Lachlan, who did Fiesta. I love the square shapes. I just think they're so great. Well, Henri Music Box. And it works about like half of them do, which is halfway. They tended to sometimes spring, and it looks like that one's off its base a little bit. But somebody who, I bet someone could unscrew it and put it together and it'd work fine, but not me. Ah yes, the Perot type mimes. These were popular again in the 80s. They'd been popular in the 30s, and when the Deco Revival came along, well, they started making them again. It's a very fair price at 18. The mermaid for 30, unfortunately, you know, the painting and the glazing, and sometimes they'd get glaze pops. She got a really bad one right by her eye, and it's too bad because $30 is a really good price on the 1930s mermaid otherwise and i would love to get her my mother collects those but unfortunately her factory flaws in just too conspicuous a spot these are rosling sparklers rosling from california love their stuff parrot is pretty loads of salts and peppers and look at this fun face Love that face. Open mouth guy ashtray. <laughs> and that's basically what he is. He's a smoker, 1920s or 30s. Who left this behind for matches and cigarettes? Oh, he's got a nice little dog pipe stand. You know, I have to say his prices are fair. He's priced most of these things around retail, medium retail, and it's absolutely appropriate and right for a store and there are a lot of things collectors could come in here and buy and a few things that dealers can buy for resale so i'm excited it's a new stop on my route whenever he decides to have a pop-up store open that is florida flamingo of course he and i both love the flamingos and i sell in florida he's got 12 dollars on this one and because it's a box i might just get that it is sirocco wood but I think the fact that it's a box is a good thing. Mid-century fish ashtray, that's fun. And we see some name brand and non-name brand stuff. He's done a good job laying it out though. Royal Copley deer. The Black Panther, he's got $50 on, which is about the right price these days. The little bird. This bottle is fun, I think it's a bottle. Hmm. 
looks a little too much like a urinal shape for my taste. I'm just saying. Love the red horse planter. And it's funny because I always want to say these are great in Laguna, but no, I don't think so. I think they did the purple. Fish planter is cute. Hello. Hey there. I'm sorry. Yeah, Diana, I'm so glad to meet you. Oh, cool. So you got a calendar quilt. Oh, how nice. And it's got the flowers of the month on it. Oh, that's really pretty. Wow. That is really nice. How much was that, if you don't mind me asking? Wow, that's a good deal. Can you see the bottom? I can see, yes, I can see all the way to December. That is beautiful. Oh, what a nice find. And this beautiful, I th I'm hoping this is Bakelite. Think oh, it looks like Bakelite. That's a good piece. Oh my gosh, yeah, that is a good piece. I've had that one before. That's really cool. This, I can't remember what this purple stone is, but it's de definitely the Native American people use it a lot. That's really, really pretty. It's great, and the price was fantastic. 16 bucks on that. Oh my gosh, that's a steal. Gave, gave me this for 35. Wow, that's very good. That's a good price. It's, you, don't, you don't see the unusual stuff. Anymore. No, you, you really don't. And you got a bag too. Oh my gosh. Wait, let me show you my novelty oh, earrings. Oh my gosh, that's yeah, great. I see you like the novelty um, earrings. Yeah. And they so cute. My, uh, if she gets hungry later, she'll like from the <laughs> <laughs> I love it with yeah. the shirt. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I didn't get too much. I, got a, I think it's a Namiji base. Is that what they say? Oh, Namaji, yes. Namaji. I like their stuff. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, that bag, honey. Well, I don't want to drop it. Yeah, no, it's okay. We get it. And I got another little tiny Southwest that had a similar. Oh, how cool. Oh, that's great. So this is the store, and he's got a neon sign. It's real nifty vintage. I'm not sure why he's got one way. Maybe I'll buy that from him. That doesn't make sense up there. And he thought of Yvonne. I always think of Yvonne when I see happy face, Yvonne Thrifty Rich. So Jeffrey's got some of his flamingo collection back here and I'm very happy because I see a couple pieces he got from me and I always like that because I also collect flamingos. And then there's this great Carlo Flamingo. I love those. This really is a great place. I guess it was a grocery store originally, but he's got his big shipping room back here. I'm sneaking around and <laughs> Nikki just caught me. And I see a really cool tray that I love. Oh, there's his treasure craft. And look, he's hiding it. So nobody knows it's here. Hmm. I guess that means I have to bid. This little guy probably had his eyes painted very lightly. But that is a treasure craft sprite. And there's the neat strawberry tray that they made. There's the mushroom shoe and a little Menahuni pineapple guy. And look, there's a pair of owls. So he's got a bunch of it and he's holding out on me. I like the notch cupboard there. And then another vault door. There's all these vault doors on here. I wonder what the previous people were hiding. I bet he found some cool stuff in here when he got this place. Wow, it's really nice. It's got quarters back here. I think I could just move in. This pair of heavy bronze 1930s Scotty bookends is $22. I love them, and they are going with me. Stella's getting the most attention of anybody. Fish wall pocket. And this is one clown I do like. I have always liked the clown juicer. And he tends to sell well. And he's only $22, which means Misty priced him. <laughs> Speaking of clowns, there's Bozo. Bozo was the most famous of the TV clowns of the 50s, but there were a lot of them, regional ones. J.P. Patches in Seattle, for example, was ours that we grew up with. But Bozo became nationally syndicated. And I remember thinking that his big red feet were really scary when I was a kid. Nice set of glasses here. I like the diamond point screen print in the orange. That's very 1970-ish. Very cute the way he has the kitchen set up. This is what he did when he had the mall space and he has brought that same ethos here. 
this is a neat line here. Okay, and he says it works, but notice the design. This is Sunbeam. It's a percolator from about 1939, and it's a design similar to the designs being done at the New York and San Francisco World's Fairs at that time. Not exactly a Trilon and Paris sphere, but definitely very deco to look skyscraper-ish. And it's a great design. And the fact that it still works 80 years later is a testimony to really good American craftsmanship. <laughs> Look at this crazy poodle. I just had to see this. I love this thing too. I've never seen one quite like it. And I saw it when he did his preview. Yeah, I could own that. But I have a few things at the counter already. <laughs> This looks like a Midwestern pottery because it's a ball jug like we see, but notice the way the glaze goes really thin at the handles, and it's pretty thin at the top as well. A lot of the Midwestern firms, and it, look, it was 50 cents when it was brand new, which would have been about 1930. Especially during the Pre Depression, a lot of the Midwestern firms that were doing crockery did tableware to try to extend their lives. but. The glazing wasn't really their specialty, so that was harder for them. And so you see these areas where they go to the tan because the glaze is thin. So that's a good way to identify a smaller Midwestern pottery as opposed to a big one like Hall or one of the big major companies. And this is sure a nice piece of furniture here. I'm just noticing furniture. I'm really only getting around for the second time, and there's so many fun people coming and going that it's really been hard to focus here on shopping, but I'm trying really hard because I am finding some stuff. I think some of his prices are very good. And some of the merchandise is a lot of fun. Look at the sailfish there. And we're going to say goodbye to Laura and Mary Beth and Jamie because Jamie has to go back to California. Bye. It's so nice to meet you. I got to meet Aaron in person, and Aaron and Stella are going off with some delicious cookies that Stella wants, I can tell. Yeah, she probably does. <laughs> well, it's good to meet you. Have fun. You two look like you've made it through a pretty heavy weekend so far. <laughs> the cat is great. That's what I said about the pants that you bought. Lots of toys, all around fun. This is all fun little stuff. I love noisemakers. Six dollars each, that's about what I get for them. Now this little piece here, I believe, is by Higgins. Yes, it is. It's just a little ashtray. He's got 12 on it. There's a little money in this, and I just love it, so I'm going to get it. But the Higgins signature there in the corner is what you look for. They would make these as flat trays, and then they would just drop the bottom out, and that's how you end up with these dishes like this. And they did some really big drops, like big centerpiece bowls where the bottom just drops right out, so it's a deep center bowl and a big rim. They're cool. I like them. A friend of mine knew the Higgins when he lived in Chicago, so maybe I'll send it to him. This is my favorite. I love the little man. Yes, I saw him. He's so great. I don't know if he's anybody or not. I think he's just a studio piece, but I think he's so cool, and it's hand-blown. Yeah, this is some glass blower, but it's, it's really neat, actually. That'd be fun for, like, Halloween or Day of the Dead. I love that. Yeah, I do, too. You have been so much help here, I can tell, because, oh, oh my gosh. This is just so fun. Isn't it? Yeah. It's so funny, though, that you're... Don't you notice how sometimes it's like helping someone with their store is more fun than running your yes. own? Yeah. It is. It is. And I just know how hard he's worked. Yeah. I mean, because he just... The sleepless nights, and he's just... Oh, I... All of his time and energy in here. And I could not believe how organized it was. You've seen my storage house. <laughs> it's nothing well, like this. Neither is mine. And I, <laughs> I came here like a couple of days after he got possession of it. So I saw. The yeah, you saw it. And I remember the video and that was after you guys had cleaned for a few yeah. days. So, but what a great building. I love that health spa shelf. I do I too. I covet house. that. Yes. I was just oh. thinking I would, I, I would, so I would actually get rid of my dresser and fold my clothes and put it on <laughs> it. I think that's so cool. Again, it's so nice when it's not yours. <laughs> uh -huh.
Well, when it's yours, you see it all the time, and you're like kind of sick of seeing it. Right, and also you're like, I already thought of the thing to do with it, and I did it, and then something sold, and now I have to think of something new. And yep. and when it's someone else's, you're like, oh, it's new stuff to play with. This is cool. I think this is Ojibwe. And it seems to be in good shape, and it's $30. It looks like mid-20th century. That is not a bad price. If I didn't already have so many baskets, I'd probably buy that. Look at the push em up Something really fun that were popular, especially in the teens, 20s, and 30s. <laughs> and actually the plastic versions when I was a kid as well. And I think the faces on here are pretty great. Top hat, the drum major. And oh, another favorite of Misty's. He has more clowns hidden around here. I think he's just doing it to, I think he's doing it to torture you. Yes, I saw that. Dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun. And I just have to show Jeffrey's shirt because it just, I was just about to laugh out loud, but then there was a hug and it was a sweet moment, so I couldn't. What are you looking for? Now, this is a neat shaving mug. Well, not really a shaving mug per se because it doesn't have a place to hold the brush, but what's cool about this is it's hand decorated, it's Austrian, and all of these, all of these are good luck symbols. You've got the four leaf clover, you have the Sanskrit good luck, that is not a swastika. You have the wishbone to break for good luck. You have the horseshoe and it's facing up so the luck doesn't run out. You have a rabbit's foot. So everything on here is good luck. I think that's really cool. That's gonna be from about 1910. Someone bought it as a blank and then painted it and I just love the idea behind it. I don't know, I'm tempted, I might get that. I have always liked toast racks, and this is a cute one, 1930s, with the nice luster wear, made in Japan, and these were more popular in England than America, but they're just so great, because what they would do is you'd make the toast and you'd bring out four little pieces of toast sitting up in it. But a lot of people use these to sort mail and as letter sorters now. It's $22, that's not a bad price at all. This crab looks sort of sad. Bashir Art Tile from New Hampshire. Interesting. I've not heard of Bashir. Made in USA. This looks like a 1980s piece. There are a lot of small art tile companies that did work. Some of this you'll see laid into countertops and backsplashes, and then a lot were made as trivets. And look at this very handsome frame. When you see these kinds of metal tabs, these are going to be Victorian reproduction from the 1950s, 60s, 70s era. And it's priced at 55, which is about right for what it is. Nice piece. Most of the folks here are viewers or have their own channels, but there are a few folks in the area who've come in as well. So he's gotten some nice traffic and had a good weekend, it seems. And I have too, it's been a lot of fun. These are custard glass by Fenton, and yes, they will glow as well. It does look like Holt Howard or P.Y. because of those eyes, yeah. Oh my gosh, I just bought a P.Y. apple. Oh, I love that. for $4. Wow. Oh, that's great. P.Y. can be big money, some of it. Ah, oh, there's a piece that I feel a little bad seeing because I sold it to him, and he should have <laughs> sold it by now. Oops. And lurking up in the corner here, we have from Pensacola Beach, Florida, this neat flamingo shell lamp. These sorts of things done in the concrete bases with a little Christmas nightlight type thing behind them were very popular roadside souvenirs starting really just after the Second World War. And you do see some a little bit pre-war as well. This one, because of the glossy foil label, it's gonna be probably 1970s, which is near the end of when you see these because they were expensive to put together and people stopped doing it. So Barb is wrapping and you got the Red Wing vase and I picked that up and I came so close to buying that. I think it's fantastic and what a great price. Yeah. Yay. Actually I like everything you got. That's a, um, that looks like a cottage cookie jar 1930s probably. 
Okay. Very sweet. Oh, and some uranium glass. Those are good prices. I always like this share and cabbage rose pattern because it's 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 on the back rather than the surface, and so it's deep. It's very yeah, it is very deep. Cool. Yeah, that'll reflect really well. Very cool. Got to have the fangirl stuff. Yep. <laughs> And here is Hope's pile. She's getting this neat stool. I walked around it a bunch of times and thought it was really well made. It looks like it's hand hewn and it's pegged. So for twelve dollars, that's a great deal. She's getting a bunch of Santa heads. These are really cute. I'm not sure what they were for originally. Maybe little candles, I'm guessing. And then some poodles and this plum colored glass. This is Pilgrim. Pilgrim made this in the early 60s. It's a great little shape. They had Italian designers, the Sandin brothers, who they brought from Italy in order to make these. Barb was asking me about this because she got this. She has it priced at 125, which I think is about right. This looks to be one of the commercially produced screen painted pieces from that era. It does have a signature, but a lot of these signatures were made up. And you notice it doesn't even make sense, T-Z-R-N. It's sort of like, well, we need to sign it with something. We see a lot that are signed Lee Reynolds. That was a manufacturer, and Lee Reynolds was not an actual artist. So a lot of these were done as art pieces in a commercial vein in the 60s and 70s. Social media marketing um, in my nine to five job. This kind of event was brought together because of social media, and that's amazing. Exactly, and it's just like any media you have to fact check, you have to make sure that what you're saying is true, and if you're saying what's right and doing what's right, then everybody is really helpful and really great and connect a really, really wonderful experience, and way better than I expected when I started doing it. Absolutely, and you know what? You get to find other nerds on the internet. Yes. How great is that? People who understand <laughs> our sickness and they love it too. Yes, that's so wonderful. Uh, what's the name of your book? It is called How to Stop Falling for Marketing Tactics. Oh, so, that's great. yes, yeah, so you can go check it out. It is available on Amazon. Oh, that's awesome. And you know, that's actually a really important thing too because it's so new. A lot of people, I think, are getting a little hoodwinked by stuff not really understanding. It is a marketing tool. Yes. if it's being used that way. Yes, and one thing I found is when I talk to people about different social media tactics, as if it was a marketing tactic, all of a sudden they got it. They were like, oh, like this is trying to sell me this idea. And so the book is just put into like little itty bitty chunks, like little, little itty bitty paragraphs to explain a tactic and to explain how it worked. And it even has real memes in it, so you can look at the meme and I tell you why it worked. I came into this really blind as to social media and how it worked and what it was, and I had to figure all of that out on my own. And to have read something in advance like that would have been so helpful. So thank you for sharing all that. Yeah, thank you. Even the cash register is old in this place. Isn't that great? Catbird Finds is going to get this little elephant. This is Shawnee. So cute with the little eyelashes. Not big enough for them to mark Shawnee on it, but it is definitely their piece. They did a little pig too, but I love the elephant. And of course they had to get bluebirds, but the stuff behind it is mine. Yeah, mine was horrible. I did not. You can tell Jeffrey is an artist and I am not. This is... So Diana from Junk in the Trunk is signing this shirt. All of us YouTube channel folks have signed it for a viewer who brought it in and wanted it. I think that's very sweet and kind of cool. Well, this was so much fun. It was so great to see all the people. It was great to shop. I cannot wait until we have bigger and bigger YouTube people meetups. I think it's just wonderful to see the real world of antique collecting coming together with the virtual world. And it's nice to see all of you folks too. I'm George the Antique Nomad. I'm on the social media you see listed below. Please subscribe, tell your friends, and click to be notified that bell, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. 
Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!